I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. This is episode 12, and today I've got Rob, and I've got Neegs. How's it going, guys? Hi, guys. It's all going well. Hi, everyone. Got a lot of crazy things that happened in the news. This just this is last week or Let's so. Let's start there. Sure. Let's we'll start there. Why well, seems to be our <laughs> like, thing. Like every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right. So we have the usual uh, bear news with, you know, Mongox movement. So this time yeah. we have like a $75 million to beat them and a $709 million to an unknown wallet. So, yeah. um, of course, we, it as usual. Mine. I'm just letting you know. Oh, what did you nice. say? Oh, you me 10 bucks. <laughs> it was <mine>. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> in fact, we've seen the market being. Um, pretty unstable, but uh, realistically, we can say that with all those news and billions of dollars being distributed, um, Bitcoin has actually been pretty solid, right? So yeah, I think right I mean, now it's around 58K, right? Isn't that? Yeah, uh, and we've we been going, you know, 60,000 plus or minus like three or four, and it's been months yeah. of that. I mean, we had one, one kind of, we had maybe two events outside that range above and below, but yeah, it's been a it's been a stable coin. I mean, and honestly, if you're good, you know, those those swings have been really good for you, but I'm not that person. So I, yeah, everybody <laughs> likes to, you know, those tr day trading kind of algorithms. Yeah. They like to ride right in that middle. Neeks has helped me understand mm -hmm. that quite a bit. So yeah. get a little bit of something off of everything if possible. Yeah. But it's we're coming to world. the end of August. And that's, uh, you know, traditionally August has kind of sucked, um, as, as I recall. I remember often thinking like i'm gonna pull all my crypto out in august and i've never done it but i've definitely <laughs> thought of it <laughs> you know. perpetual hodler yeah <laughs> it just seems like a lot of a pain it's just a pain in the ass <laughs> i i think that's funny because if we if we look at the news and we're talking about hodling i think that's exactly the opposite of what everybody did in el salvador no, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, that's another story, right? Right. So I guess we can talk about that for a little bit. So I guess it's not been bad. It's just like not been this amazing thing, uh, you know, or the, uh, an amazing uh, kind of opportunity for El Salvadorians. I'll put it that way. I know that a lot of people move down there. I know it's yeah. it's relatively widespread usage. Businesses have it. But it doesn't look like like on a day to day basis that there's a lot of usage of 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 crypto uh, in El Salvador and it's mostly dollars. Um, so that's right. Uh, so they had some pretty good numbers when they started, right? They they had a pretty large, I think, um, some forty percent of the population ended up uh, downloading it and. I, we don't have updated number after 2022 for that, or we, we didn't find any. <laughs> That's but, yeah, um, yeah. what we see, however, is what you mentioned, Rob, is that they, so they received $30 uh, to, as incentive, apparently to pay fees um, for using the wallet. And basically it has mostly been used for paying fees on US dollar transactions. But uh, I think, yeah, Bukele was saying it is kind of a mixed um, result is not unhappy about the decision, but basically was expecting the adoption by the population to go a little bit faster. But I think yeah. it's also important to understand that it's mostly a cash-driven uh, society there. Um, most of the people are unbanked. I think the number we've seen it was like 70%. And, 70 plus uh, percent cash, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those things are hard to change. However, in big businesses and institutions, they, they actually see some adoption and they see that it's working well. However, yeah. yeah, it's the population that is kind of um, being a little slower than anticipated. Well, you think about yeah. the, the population, only 20% even have debit cards. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Also, the population experience to bear, you know, that's definitely psychologically sure. draining. Um, they, uh, and, and just in terms of why you know uh, adoption across the board forget forget uh um el salvador you know it's 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 growing um but this is a long haul thing i mean it's always been positive um i think we just have to uh you know kind of wait until 
you know, as people get more and more comfortable with it and more and more legitimate um, applications show up using it. Um, but we, you know, we're not there yet. You know, we're still in, uh, unfortunately, we're still in meme coin. <laughs> Heck, we're, we're still uh, not right. here yet, even even in the U.S. We can't even Definitely get not here. Yeah, parties right. here yeah. aligned with what they're supporting. Yeah. But look, so, I was actually pretty worried when um, they announced that in 2021. I mean, it was kind of the top of the cycle. And yeah. even if um, we all know that uh, Bitcoin has been extremely reliable long term for uh, the people who invested early and, you know, continuing since, since then, um, it is, um, it is still like a four year cycle, right? And you have like yeah. huge lows in, in those cycles. And, and basically I was worried that it could have some bad repercussions for the people, but in fact, we see that they didn't use it that much. And since <laughs> then, you know, they have they get they went through a bear market now it's a bull market i'm i'm sure the you know the topic has come in the salvadorian yeah. um totally because anybody who invested like a year ago they, they they like forex so i mean that's yeah. right that's right <laughs> i mean anybody who bought it a year just a year ago so, so one thing in that to, article uh, by the way that you're talking about if if you looked at when they launched and where they had their free 30 bucks and then if they had received crypto during that time because of the change in the market, most people are in the positive at this moment in time. Yeah. And so if they yeah. would have participated, they would be at least above what they would have started at, but many didn't, unfortunately. Let's move into politics. Um, I <laughs> right, you told us through, to watch the video, right? I did. I sat through an hour and a half video. Oh. Thank you. Uh, the, so there's a group on YouTube. So you, do so you don't have to. That's the time. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to save you some time. <laughs> so uh, there's a group. So uh, here's the thing. For me, crypto is a tool. It really should not be a political thing. I don't under, like, I guess I understand why it is, but, but it just shouldn't be. It's just a tool like a hammer. And I don't like, and the fact that it's getting politicized is annoying to me. So I, I want all the parties to say, to not be pro crypto, like you got to use this, but like, yeah, it's a thing just like a hammer. And you know, it is what it is. Don't hit people with a hammer. That's not really what's happening. Um, and so you've got one side saying, we're going to, we're, we're going to make it part of our treasury policy, you know, or financial policy. And we've got another side who, uh, who's not really saying anything. And it's very annoying. In fact, it's been, you know, the fact that there's no, you know, there's little regulation uh, makes it more difficult to, you know, like we don't understand the industry doesn't really understand what they want other than to uh, have a way to take it. Um, so I sat through this hour and a half thing where, so the group is called crypto for Harris, Harris, the four is the number four. You can find them on Twitter, I think, um, or Facebook or whatever. <laughs> and it's like a bunch of, it's a bunch of Democrats who are also you know, very pro crypto. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of Democrats that are pro crypto. Um, it's just, they're not, you know, uh, it's not their thing that they're going to be voting on. Uh, whereas for me, I live in Puerto Rico. I can't vote for president, but uh, if I were voting for president, I would vote for Trump. Um, absolutely. Because, you know, it completely affects my, the industry that I work in. Um, and lots of people vote for the industry that they work in. Um, and, uh, and there are other subjects, and most of those subjects, I think, are state issues and not national ones. So that that's the way I would be voting on this. So I would like to see the sure. Democrats come, come on, get on board. So I sat through this hour and a half thing just to get to the actual story here. And there were big names there. There were governors of states, Colorado, who's very pro-crypto. Uh, Chuck Schumer, who's from my prior state. Um, he's been the senator of New York forever. Christian Gilliband, uh, the other senator from New York, were you know they were both on this. Uh, and I'm sitting here thinking, wow, that's amazing. I, maybe, you know, we'll hear something good. And unfortunately, uh, in the entire, um, hour and a half, there was not one crypto policy mentioned. Um, none, all of it, the wow. entire, the, the message that I heard the same sentence over and over and over again was we need to protect consumers and, you know, and foster innovation that, 
exact sentence verbatim um, mentioned over and over. It got annoying. Um, and so like, yeah, we want to do so. so the answer, you know, the, the position in the democratic position is we want to do something. We don't know what it is. Um, and so, uh, now the Crazy. only thing that the only promise that came out of Schumer was by the end of the year, this year, 2024, uh, some legislation is going to go out, but he wouldn't say that's what's right. in I think legislation. we highlighted that last time. Yeah. yeah. So he wouldn't say what's in it. He wouldn't say like, here's what we're thinking. Just <laughs> so like some legislation, I don't know. Is that good or bad? I have no idea. Um, and I will tell you that the crypto for Harris people were, uh, bad mouthing Biden, and we're bad mouthing the Democratic Party. Uh, in the beginning, they were they were very harsh about the situation with crypto in the Democratic Party. So kudos to them. They had this thing. They, you know, I, as I said, there was lots of relatively important Democratic leaders in this thing, and then like. I don't know, three days later, the Democratic, the DNC came out with their platform that mentioned crypto 0% in it. Like it just was not even in there. I had 92 pages that didn't mention crypto once. And That's I right. would have thought it would have been in there. <laughs> Something. Yeah. The thing I would <laughs> yeah. add to that is that, I mean, I won't spend too much time on that, but he was also mentioning Biden a few times. And what, what we can see is that it seems that it was not a document that was specifically prepared with you know, the Harris team to right. define, you know, a plan for them. And yeah. as, and I think it highlights what, what we've said last week, where we, um, sorry, last episode, two weeks ago, when we were saying that the Democrats seems to be looking at crypto now. Right. Yeah. And it seems, they seem to be preparing all those things now because they see like the opposition is actually having some, uh, steam with that. And and they want to be in, and apparently now they push that platform, and of course they they didn't have time to update their new uh, crypto love. Um, I would say yeah. like that's what yeah, it looks maybe, like. Yeah, maybe maybe right, let's let's hope for that. But uh, my and it may be you know just the way we remember th remember things one way or another. But my experience with with that party is they'll promise something, and then when it actually comes out, it's awful with regard to regulation. Like it, right. it's, it's a, right. like when it, something comes out, it's going to be somehow some agency crawling up our butts. And I'm going to tell I, I don't Correct. know if I mentioned this last year. I think I did mention it last time. And I hope people spread this idea. Crypto just needs a, a Miranda statement. They just need a statement that relates the risk, makes, tells yeah. people blatantly that it's not money. It's not fiat. It's not dollars. It's not backed. There's no insurance. All of these under, in, other industries have it. That's all we need. And then let yeah. us do crypto in America. You, so that's, like, that's, yeah, please I, that's right. I was thinking that about the same. I was thinking the same thing because they keep talking about policies. They want to protect yeah. consumers. Now, I'm all for protection. My whole motivation has been consumer activism in cryptos from the beginning. And and I think that that really hinges upon education then when you say education people go oh that's a waste nobody will pay attention mm -hmm. nobody's going to do anything and then you put in regulations you you create laws and one ends up happening anyway now you have all these articles now you have all these pamphlets warning don't answer emails if you get a phone call i've seen these yeah. things come in the mail and they come from the government many times trying to educate people that criminals will use your phone to try to trick you your bank ends up doing it so yeah. they just push it off to somebody else or they spend more money to create a law they spend more money that they take out of taxes to start doing education i like your idea of, of a type of miranda <laughs> you have the right to buy yeah. this <laughs> yeah you have the right. right to own it yeah but you also have the right to lose everything as long as you know that yeah. and as, <laughs> as long as it, like the, the, the warning on the cigarette box cigarette boxes come with like skulls and crossbones uh, and pictures of exactly of, 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 of like <laughs> diseased lungs people still buy them you like, yeah. do you, you know, have like, do you have warnings I, like that where you live neeks do they have the uh, the the sort of scary packaging on your cigarette so, containers not everything right so here is mm -hmm. one major difference that we have in our legal system here so first of all the penalty is are kind of capped right so you won't mm -hmm. get uh, you won't become millionaire because uh, you know they made an error or they didn't inform you of something uh, you will basically, the most you can expect 
is basically being compensated for your losses and maybe a little bit more. But that's that's pretty mm-hmm. much what you can expect. And then the other yeah, thing yeah. is that if you lose, you have to pay the fee for both parties, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. those two things makes that uh, you won't go to court if you don't really have a good case, right? So it makes a lot of people that yeah, we do have not... a system that is not like that in the states. Uh, what, yeah. what what's the term for that? I can't remember it all of a sudden, but um, lawyers will definitely tort. get their little class tort action law. lawsuits. What is it called? Yeah, it, right. It's tort law. Like tort you know, law, if you yeah. get hurt, and however you get hurt, usually I think tort is could be wrong. I think it's physical hurt though. Um, I, I don't think it's like we a, have legal abuses. Yeah. that's all I'm saying. We definitely no, but do, we, you would have that yeah. here, but yeah. you will be compensated. Basically, you will be compensated for the injury, obviously, the loss mm-hmm. of revenue that w- it would have incurred, and maybe yeah. just a little bit more, you know, for your personal feelings, yeah. right? Yeah. But the personal <laughs> feelings are pretty much nothing here. That's that's where the big difference here <laughs> is. While your in the U.S., like, people get millions for that, and this yeah. it it doesn't happen here. I don't better think. better not make that coffee too hot at McDonald's yeah. because <laughs> right. you're going to get <laughs> right. ten billion dollars. Yeah, and it, from it goes somewhere. very stupid, right? Like it, yeah. you have those stickers on the mirror in the car that is telling you that what what you're seeing is what's in the yeah. car. I mean, come on, that kind of crap. If you don't know that, you should yeah, probably so not try. Objects may be closer than they appear. <laughs> yeah, you guys bought an extension cord recently in America. There's three hmm. labels on an extension cord. I mean, like, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's because of that, right? Like, you have a big yeah. incentive to to put companies and then make them yeah. pay a lot of money. Like, well, we di- yeah. So we anyway, um, back to crypto, yeah. <laughs> um, so the Democrat... So, all right, let me be optimistic for a second. Maybe you're right, uh, Neeks. Uh, they just haven't caught up yet. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe Biden himself was holding them back. And was listening to Elizabeth Warren for too much, and maybe Harris is is going to be a little bit more positive. It does seem like from this from this thing I watched that there's some steam there. We'll see this year. We'll see this year. So um, the last they come the out last announcement or declaration we'll by months. Harris, mm-hmm. yeah, the last declaration by Harris was that they will support policies to help digital asset growth. So that's that's a positive statement, yeah. um, of course. You said it earlier, they often say that, and then (laughs) the end result is is crap. But then I I also wanted to kind of put that in contrast with um, the news from the other side, which is Trump declared that he wants to make uh, America the capital of crypto, right? Yeah. For all the planet. It's a completely different attitude. It's a very different state. That's right. And then I (laughs) highlighted a few other news. I don't think we need to go in depth into that, but it's really to highlight the contrast. So basically he endorsed a project that is now started by his son. He's selling more NFTs that he wants only to be tradable in 2025. So you can see that (laughs) the the commitment to crypto from each side is not the same at all. And I didn't put that in our news. He's committed... It's, it's not he himself, but he's definitely committed his brand to crypto. Yeah, right, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, so, I, I would yeah. say the side, right? The, yeah. If I take the Democrat side and the Republican yeah. side, and then like the other actual candidate that was very supportive of crypto, yeah, right. um, yeah. RFK Jr. decided yeah. to support Trump. So Trump, yeah. Uh, it's it's very it seems very clear that um, the Trump side is definitely a step ahead in terms of. Uh, and the crypto message that's yeah. that's for it's sure. a step ahead and this is trump's fourth nft collection <laughs> right and it's, he's and he's, right. he's a he's a he's an og now yeah i don't know how many <laughs> i don't know how many you know democrat crypto voters there are but it, it, it just seems like the democrats could just eliminate the question of whether crypto is my uh, the way i'm going to vote just by saying you know you know we're going to do that too like it, like they can get all those voters back that are voting on one one topic, however many it so you is. Kind of Maybe push thousand, me there, but know. you know, it seems that <laughs> Harris has been pretty used to do that lately. Yeah, taking yeah. the Trump claim and say like yeah. we will do that too. Oh, that's right with the uh, the tax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe what she will. Say? I don't know. Let's we'll just see. Parrot it back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's move on. Let's what about move on. what about your uh, Solana? Your I know you're a big bag holder. Oh my God, I. I for me, I just, I just can't. I don't, I don't get the the love affair with people that people have for Solana. 
for me, Solana legitimized, you know, the stopping of blockchains being an okay thing. I just, <laughs> I just do not like, I don't like it. I don't like the whole project. I'm just saying that out loud. I know other people love it. It's fast or whatever. Fees are low. I, I don't think those are good reasons to like it. <laughs> you know, it's just another smart contract blockchain that stops. And, uh, and now- fast and then hits a wall. Yeah. And now maybe it's a, a security. <laughs> You know. Yeah, that's what the SEC <laughs> has been saying, right? Yep, that's so, right. I, I just don't think it's a great platform. It could anything. be great. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just takes time to be great. But uh, uh, over the last few years, every time you see something happen, it's, oh, we had to stop again. Oh, <laughs> you know, you can check the block explorer. It's like a million transactions every block. And then all of a sudden, it's nothing for a long <laughs> <Yeah>. while. Because <laughs> everything's <laughs> down. How do you have yeah. everything down? You yeah. don't see Bitcoin I, I, going down like that. You don't see Litecoin going down like that. You don't, you don't see, see Divi going down even like that. Even if crypto wouldn't exist. I know Divi doesn't go down. <laughs> the crypto crazy. wouldn't be where it is if Bitcoin had been stopping like that. Like yeah, obviously totally. it would never have been a yeah. like valid alternative. Now yeah. I'll For take the same position I take every time. <laughs> you need some of everything. Like if people want it, they'll be happy to play with it. Yes. However, obviously I don't see that as they um, need to have their Miranda, their crypto Miranda rights written, written you know, read to them. <laughs> yeah. They have to check yeah. this box somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Do you have your crypto so Miranda basically, rights card? Because this is someone tried to file. Exchange. Yeah. So basically someone tried to <laughs> file a CBOE for, um, for Solana and mm -hmm. then the SEC answered and rejected it. Yeah, um, said no. as they have done a few yeah. times already and then they really re-mentioned again that they consider solana as a security which yeah. Uh, yeah. is definitely not a good news for them yeah and more sec news i think this is bigger news actually is uh yeah, is about so. open c so basically uh the sec sent a wells notice so Wells Notice is basically a notification that they are going to take action after mm. uh, their investigation. And they yeah. sent that to OpenSea CEO, the NFT marketplace. And um, of course, the position of OpenSea is that they will defend creator and, and themselves. Yeah, that made it across all my media. Uh, you know, that... I mean, I saw a lot of good debate on this, like, you know, are, are trading cards, you know, is that, is that a security also? It, it, I, I mean, this, I think it's stupid. <laughs> it seems too, like they're out of control at this moment. Like he has a, he, I mean, Gary Gensler has a history of losing. Uh, to me, this looks like a losing battle, but what do I know? You know, they, they, <laughs> they're doing this. Right. I mean, <laughs> people buy and collect trading cards and if they're a certain rarity, Right, they they're a limited value. edition. Those trading yeah. cards do go up in value. There's no question about it. This, I understand how that works. There's stores where you can go yeah. and buy trading cards. You can go to eBay and you could buy trading cards. Anything yeah. that's like that. NFTs in their distribution are similar. OpenSea just tends to be a store where you can go into mm -hmm. to get them. It's not the only one, but it is probably the largest, as, as we could yeah, all agree upon. But isn't this a little bit more like the kind of the Silk Road thing where here's a I, I'm sure, 100% sure that there are people selling uh, NFTs on the platform and and making claims that, you know, that fail, that fail the How Howey test, right? That that make it so that they are securities on there. But it doesn't mean, but that the people who should be in trouble, and I, you know, my view, they shouldn't be, but whatever, should be those people the, selling those things. Yeah. Not, not the platform that also sells perfectly, you know, just like the NFT I made for my sister or whatever. Um, you know, like it's, it's the same kind of attitude that the platform that does the, that's, that promotes or allows the transactions for the, whatever they're considering bad, that the platform's got to go. And right. But it's all about unbelievable. Yeah, but it's all about facilitating things that are considered illegal, right? So yeah, now then, you are a facilitator. Yeah, but then then Craigslist I, needs to go down, eBay needs to go down. Exactly. Like, it, it's it's the hypocrisy is unbelievable. And I, that's I can't right. stand it. You know, that's the so that's the problem. One, one thing where I think it differs from Craigslist and et cetera is that OpenSea is exclusively for NFT. NFTs aren't necessarily securities. No, no, that's what the SEC claim is what I mean. Yeah. 
right? That all so NFTs I, are securities? I, I don't think they're claiming that. I oh, think they're really? claiming that there are NFTs that are securities. Can be involved in security sales. It can't be because I can make an NFT and give it to you. And there's nothing about that that makes it a security at all. It has to be that there are NFTs that are securities and this platform was selling them. But it was originally related to what that podcast, right? Isn't that what you're right. referring to, Neegs? Is that podcast where he sold NFTs, raised money with those NFTs. Mm -hmm. They were then in term considered investors. Because he sold these NFTs, impact yeah, theory yeah. isn't they're, that the article that's related? I can to this? see how it it can cross the line, but it's not that. So on OpenSea are NFTs, and certainly they would consider some of them to be uh, securities. I, I can definitely see that happening. And so now that that now now they're suing them instead of the actual people who are, you know, doing the bad thing, whatever they think the bad thing is. It's it's to me, it, I don't see it different as Silk Road. That guy's in jail forever. <laughs> you know, it's the same to me. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with what's his face. Um, I mean, forever we don't know because it's yeah. also some of the things that uh, Trump oh, right. actually said. And Trump promises. Yeah, we're yeah. waiting for the Democrats <laughs> yeah. to say the same. Yeah. That's right. That's another thing Harris could could win <laughs> on is is say, right. like I'm going to release them day one. You know, that's right. <laughs> so. that's right. I think those cases will define where the the SEC can actually say something and and where it can't. And I, I hope uh, its area of uh, authority will be the smallest possible. Most of these services, as much as we like to call them decentralized, there is a web server, maybe yeah, several, not. that is hosting OpenSea. That's how you get there. There is a DNS yeah. that's routing probably through Cloudflare to maybe many redundant situations, but that's a centralized service. There's somebody who owns the domain, somebody who runs the service. Coinbase, same thing. You log into Coinbase. Your bank is the same thing. You log into those, comes back full circle to what you mentioned just about 15 minutes ago, Rob. We need a crypto Miranda. That yeah. helps something like yeah. OpenSea, where when you join, you have to maybe sign on the screen, digitally sign, sign with your wallet, maybe what this says. And then you're told that no matter what you're buying, there should be no guarantee. Anybody who guarantees this is most certainly lying to you if they're guaranteeing you anything. Yeah. So if you want to proceed, proceed. That's That should be standardized. I think that could be standardized for use in centralized situations that would protect yeah, some it, not company. just standardized like people can do that now but it doesn't protect them from the government in any way and, that's what i'm saying it, it should needs be, to yeah you formalized is probably better yeah. what i, I a yeah. better mm -hmm. word i should have chosen yeah yep yeah, definitely let's move on uh yeah so let's see here stable coins right let's so talk about that yeah the next the next uh topic is about stable coins so um Something that we've seen before, um, the Tron stablecoin, USDT, um, that is an algorithmic um, stablecoin, has seen uh, 750 million withdrawn from um, basically the guaranteed funds. So Justin Sun gave an explanation that it is, again, an algorithmic uh, stablecoin and Whenever the guarantee is over 120%, he can withdraw. But obviously, if you're familiar with the mechanic behind, uh, if Bitcoin was to drop 30% now, then all those numbers would change. And now, of course, the backing wouldn't be sufficient or would be limited. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's something we've seen a few times with those uh, stable coins and uh, create a little bit of fear. Yeah, I think we've seen that. I think it has to be that when we talk about these kinds ones. of things. Go ahead. I think we've seen that in the past with algorithmic sta stable coins that they they are a little bit more tenuous with it, with their with their ability to be stable <laughs> when 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 you do things like this. Um I forgot the last one. There was a big deal. Wasn't it MakerDAO? Wasn't it them? Uh depegged like for a while. Um that was, ooh, well, it was Terra a while has ago. been depegged from. Well, forget the Terra. Terra. I mean, that, that <laughs> was Celsius also died because of that, right? Like yeah. some um, readjustment, and then it was actually used as um, some attack vector 
And yeah, Celsius had other problems, I think, than than Bitcoin going down. Like, <laughs> like it was part yeah, of it, right? It. Like, it definitely. Yeah, yeah. Celsius that's was right. heavily stuck with Stakehound, also. So, I I think uh, that probably had, they couldn't access funds that they had. Uh, so, there's there's a bunch of things with Celsius that was a that was a problem, uh, and also just lying. That <laughs> anybody who's investing in yeah. purely algorithmic, right, an algorithmic stablecoin, and you're expecting confidence that it's going to hold its value you are sorely mistaken there's our miranda again um <laughs> because algorithmic stable coins truly algorithmic stable coins are so experimental at this moment in time all of them could be considered alpha we have no idea what to expect we have no idea how deep this rabbit hole goes when we have these expansions and contractions in markets and how this works. If you have that kind of coin, you have to know as much as you want to call it stable, there's no promise you can ever have. Yeah. At this point in time, I don't care what it is. If it's backed with something that's centralized, of course, there is some company behind it it is centralized, of course. They should have those assets centralized, of course. They should protect those assets. Algorithmic stablecoins, as much as I think it's a beautiful potential opportunity for the future, if you are invested in an, an algorithmic stablecoin with no backing of any kind, you're, you're on the cutting edge of risk, the highest risk possible, I would say. I just don't see it as something yet ready for market. Yeah, speaking of which, the market cap for stable coins are at a new all time high. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's right. We People didn't are put definitely trusting them. <laughs> and Tether, I th we didn't put it here, but Tether also is, you know, thinking about start, starting a DRAM. And actually, when we looked at that news, mm. we saw that there's already a Euro Tether, there's already a Mexican Tether. Like, there yeah. are actually a ton. And I mean, the the share of market cap is for stable coins is not decreasing. It's yeah. clearly the the engine behind the liquidity um, for basically most of the market. And yeah, yeah it, it is not changing. We talked about we, that already. That's a utility it is, function, uh, right? Still yeah, strong. I mean, it's the biggest crypto utility that there is. I mean, there are countries that centralized. have people relying on <laughs> on tether. To be able to hold their hold their funds because the yeah. the native fiat currency sucks so bad, um, and um, you know are inflating to to oblivion, um, so they get tether and they and I know that like a, a, a popular one is actually the Tron based tether, not not this that we we're just talking about the, the tether <laughs> that's on Tron. The one because it's fast, with USDD. it's cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's fast. It's cheap. Um, and you know, it's, it's easy to do. It's easy that to doesn't use, protect right? you against inflation. That just takes whatever you've earned. Maybe you flip out what crypto has gone up in value and you flip it into tether. No, no, no. If it, it affects, it definitely affects you. Um, so if I, up until Malay, right, if I had Argentinian pesos, right, I would ha have half the value the next year. Um, and so I take my, what I earn in pesos and I move it into USDT and now it, it holds the, the value. That's 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 yes, what but they're USDT doing. USDT is deflating or is inflating. So I'm just I'm just making a statement. If you have, if you have USDT, which is paired with USD and and other things, mm -hmm. as the USD inflates, your tether inflates the same way. Oh, oh, you, sure, but it's yeah. it. But we're talking about 114 percent versus seven or two. Of course, or whatever. Of course, yeah. I'm just making, <laughs> right, yeah, right. clarifying. If that. you look at it globally, you yeah. inflation. There's not inflation. many economy that are doing better than the dollar. There are a few, yeah. like yeah. I, when I look at my wallet in dollar, it is actually decreasing when I look back in my home country, cause I'm in Switzerland, mm -hmm. but it, it's a pretty rare occasion for most people. It, the dollar is actually more solid than their national currency. Yep. Sure. Sure. All right. Oh, which is some... a very bad statement about fiat. Let's be clear. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's the thing. It's like what happens in ten years had happened in ten years. I don't know what's going to happen with Malay. I think it's getting way better. But uh, you know, what happens in ten years or even less? I think it's four years in in uh, in um, in Argentina. You know, took took America a hundred years. 
you know, to, you know, to lose 96% of the value of their, of the, of the dollar or the, uh, the currency. Um, so it just happens way faster in some countries and U S is one of the slower ones. So, but it, yeah, you're right. Yeah. They're all losing value. I think. That's right. That's right. Oh, hey, how about those, some uh, Sony beautiful Sony notes? Value. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so actually, we're getting some of that value. Yeah. Switch Sorry. to some <laughs> bullish news. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, so Sony's jumping on the uh, blockchain. We mentioned this before, but now it looks like there's even more news around it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, before we were talking about some uh, private, uh, some kind of backend usage of blockchain, but in fact, they are now going going out with a testnet uh, public blockchain based on. Um, optimism and mm -hmm. uh, yeah it looks like sony is really committed to uh, taking a foot in the blockchain industry they also started to partner with transact which is a fiat partner and they basically want to develop on ramp services on blockchain so it seems that they are very committed and then there is another news that they want to start a layer two on ethereum so yeah strong uh, strong moves from sony in the blockchain direction yeah, that's a pretty amazing leadership position they're taking. That's a, that's a very significant company. For um, all your PS5s, and, and, you'll be able to have NFTs and make your payments for your games. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like the, the like if you listen to Jamie Diamond at, Diamond at uh, JP Morgan, he is very, you know, you'll see, you'll hear him say, you know, Bitcoin is crap, but, but blockchain is an important technology. And then they have their own blockchain technology called Quorum. Um, this isn't that. These are, you know, optimism and ethereum these are these are public blockchains and uh their tony is participating with that instead of developing their own kind of blockchain technology infrastructure thing that they that only they use to me this, this is a night and day difference between uh being pro blockchain and being frankly pro crypto um th that's, that's what right. i'm seeing here yeah yeah no it's very interesting i think you were mentioning the um, reputation of Sony to do closed source things and yeah. then take yeah. kind of a this um, right. yeah. unique direction. Uh, but here it seems that yeah, they they are taking some kind of first mover. Uh, they probably would have some first mover advantage in uh, the big uh, big names because yeah. I I don't know about any other big name that is taking such public direction. Of course, there are uh, IBM and AWS that have blockchain solutions. And but it's not really all over the news. While yeah. Sony apparently is definitely taking a, a de desire to for this direction to be known. Yeah, so that's uh, I think that's good. very interesting. I was there. I'm old yeah. enough to remember the SD versus memory stick um, uh, sure. battle. I'm also old enough to know the Betamax and VHS battle. That's how old I am. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Sony was in all of those. You know. <laughs> So that's right. It'll be Correct. interesting to see what's happening here. <laughs> I still have my Sony little sticks. Yeah. Uh, gum, no, that half, Sony like, kind of lost all of those. <laughs> so nobody uses a memory yeah. stick anymore. So <laughs> I, th I think I still have a camera that uses them. Yeah. My daughter likes old electronics and I had to go find memory sticks for her, um, which is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Bay is a good place. <laughs> right. uh, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, some right, bullish so, news? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We continue with some kind of positive news. So yeah. that's more generic, but basically a few indicators on Bitcoin, derivative, on-chain data are showing some uh, much better... Uh, Positive. Yeah, much better numbers than they were showing the last couple of months. So that's, that's pretty good. And then uh, also some news about... It's all about basically uh, crypto having uh, like some better news than the last few weeks, right? So yeah. there is basically the credit. So not everyone maybe is familiar with that, but a, a lot of people are um, basically using their crypto to take loans, right? They yeah. put their mm -hmm. crypto in guarantee. And I mean, it has been a pretty difficult time for those people, uh, but now it's getting much better. And so that's also a good indicator. And then uh, maybe do you want maybe talk about the Nasdaq? Uh, 
of all the articles, I did not read this one. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically the Nasdaq um, <laughs> is asking to be able to list Bitcoin as an index, right? So that would definitely be a very strong um, yeah. signal for Bitcoin. Uh, you know, m more like a normal assets like all of the mm -hmm. others. So that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely legitimizing it further, uh, which is good. That's right. Definitely. That's right. Yep. Then you got Celsius. Yeah, this is to me. This is pretty good. Like they're they're almost done distributing. You know, <laughs> they had a lot of work to do there. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, much. Two, yeah. Over two hundred fifty thousand distributed. Yeah. 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 Over two hundred fifty thousand of the three hundred seventy ish thousand total eligible creditors from 165 countries yeah have now crazy. received distributions that's yeah. pretty wild that's a lot yeah. it's insane yeah 93 percent of the overall value so basically 200 million remaining out of the 2.73 billion yeah that's so crazy. yeah that's just crazy very good news and again yeah. right the market even if it has not been like a beautiful great green period. It right. has <clears throat> not been like a massive dump, even if we have yeah. seen all, all this new uh, supply being basically circulating while it has been uh, technically locked or frozen for yeah. years, right? Yeah. A ton yeah. of people talking okay. about how we're going to get to 16,000 on Bitcoin or whatever. None of that happened. Um, and 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 really coming towards the end of all of this kind of U.S. dumping, Mt. Gox dumping, like and I'm saying dumping, but you know what I mean, distributing, and then people probably you know dump. Um, all we're coming to the end of a lot of that. And um, yeah, but you you and, think everybody's all secretly doing it together to keep it down? I remember our last call. Yeah, it's all happening at once. No, I'm kidding with you. No, no, I said it was happening at once. I don't. I, I I'm not a big. <laughs> I'm not a big conspiracy person, so I, like, I, I don't know how coordinated it is, but it just it just seemed like a lot at once. That's all. Yes, it does. <laughs> you know? it does. Yeah, that's true. But but it's often like we'll, that, right? If yeah. you remember previous we'll, cycles, like you you start like a big red candle, and now China <laughs> is banning it. Uh, right. Whatever is happening, <laughs> exactly. China is always in the wave, you know. Yeah. And so, like we always used to make fun of that. So, yeah. so it's reactionary. Uh, Once one bad thing happens and somebody goes, oh, no, let's do ours now. Yeah, it seemed like it was coming <laughs> in threes, definitely. Exactly. And now, this time, it seems like it's coming in sixes. So <laughs> that's right. Well, we got and good then, news. Maybe some people yep. are thinking about the interest rates change, maybe a positive yep. for Bitcoin. That's right. So we <laughs> had some uh, CPI that came up with the higher um, than anticipated inflation over 3%, which was like mm -hmm. kind of a red flag for the rate cuts. However, yeah. the um, communication, like expectations of the Fed actually uh, uh, cutting it. There are actually even conversation that um, they are actually late in doing it. They should have done mm -hmm. it even earlier. So mm -hmm. it looks like it could happen and that would definitely be a good thing for Bitcoin. Yeah, at least be great. in perception, right? We, we've seen that happen before, right? The expectations of interest rate cuts, the reaction to interest rate cuts, and then the reaction in the market tends to usually be positive like that. Yeah, yeah because look, it, it means that if you are uh, buying bonds and then the interest rates are high, now d this revenue is competing with what you're making as revenue yeah. in crypto, right? But then if those interest yeah. rates go down again, and now you're making like 2% on your bond, obviously crypto is a much more interesting solution. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Definitely. So well, yeah, the well, last thing about the real news is about an, an, like some kind of study where they identified that usually Bitcoin tend to do very good after US elections. And it is pretty interesting. They look at several cycles and um, basically show that over the next few days and month, um, it was pretty good. Now, what they don't say in that article is that Bitcoin usually has a four-year cycle. Yeah. Which <laughs> the, the seems to be a, a U.S. election <laughs> cycle. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, it's not yeah. necessarily the election themselves that are right. that are doing. Yeah, it. they just happen to fall within the same 
365 days. Uh, that's right. Is, so that's pretty funny. I like <laughs> chew gum and trip. Therefore, the gum is causing me to trip. Yes. So it's like, you know, you, know, you just hit your toe on something. All right. Uh, so we could cool. talk about Tan um, because we, I mentioned Solana. Uh, the, the Tan network uh, is also slowing down and stopping. You know, I mentioned that before about how I hate how it got uh, stopping. Blockchain stopping was legitimized by Solana. And now we seem to tolerate it with, uh, with the Telegram's uh, blockchain and other ones. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't it's seem not to be the Telegram's only one, right? We've had problem. Cosmos. We've had others that have that have had issues, yeah. right? So they sometimes, for some reason, stop because there's yeah. some centralized. There, what was that uh, term that we had for that um, Windows problem that everyone had? What was that called? Crowd, crowd strike. strike. Crowd strike. <laughs> yeah. There's That's a right. crowd strike point somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. And right. so, yeah. But I think I for know. Don, it's kind of um, another issue. So. It is not the first time. Tony is actually having some uh, frequent issue about um, an ability to process uh, transaction fast enough. It is um, it is kind of victim of its success, uh, definitely. But it's also highlighting its limits. But in the last, um, I think, three days or something, the it stopped twice, and so that's kind of even worse than usual. Um, mm -hmm. Now it is working um, as usual again. But we can see that, um, yeah, more and more. And as you know, we talk about those news about adoption and some potentially uh, welcoming of positive regulation that would probably follow with you know more adoption, more usage. And we can see that the current blockchain networks are already struggling um, immediately when they actually get famous. It, it is actually interesting because when when uh, they are not really famous it is really a very low usage and it looks like that network will be able to handle everything but then whenever there is one thing like you can see on solana um most of the actual usage is coming from pump.fun so one thing and then the whole network is now having so much issues and it is something that uh could be completely solved by uh, side chains because the advantage is that you can scale up as you need, right? Like if you have more more need for a new project, and again, that new project would start on its own side chain, and then obviously things can scale up, competition can come up if the fees are coming, if the if the network is stopping, that would be a huge red flag if you have multiple options, right? Yeah. So this is definitely a something it's an that side chain can fix condition so we see it in ton network uh we see um you know slow down in aptos in solana in like uh, even cosmos all of this stuff like this is why in div we keep pr promoting the the side chain kind of side paradigm chain. you know because the utility the excitement needs to happen off the main chain like every all these chains even ethereum like like all of them, when something gets popular, it means everyone else can't do their thing. And that that proposition is nuts. So That's this right. is what we're yeah. fixing. This is what this is the exact one of the many things that we're fixing by pushing utility to side chains, um, but having the transfer of assets to those side chains being uh, safe. Uh, that's and that's that's the key. That's not the same. Well, and you, and on the side chain, you're still using Divi. Uh, entirely that's right sovereign. that's yeah. right and i mean mm -hmm. you always have some new project that is mm -hmm. coming and forking or uh, reviewing uh you know an approach and then claiming that they will be able to handle everything but yeah. every time is the same right solana was the last the last um, successful one but we yeah. can see you just mentioned aptos that it is also the same right they yeah. they came with like huge claim that they would be able to handle everything and now they have some kind of um, alternative of pump.fun on their network and they are already facing um limitations so yeah it, it is pretty clear that the only way to really scale is to have the ability to expand the network through yeah. multiple Correct. blockchains and and that's only through the technology of our partner that is it is possible yep reactive yep. scalability responsive scalability 
scale up, scale down. And those who participate, those doing the beneficial work, receive that beneficial opportunity of participating. As things get busier, people can earn more. As people earn more, more people join it. It is automatic. It is holistic. It's part of the network. It's not one developer per se controlling the let network who can come in how many we can have then when somebody does something like a meme coin drop when you look at solana most of the transactions the bazillions it has every block what are those transactions it's all it's like meme, meme coin. coin spam it is it, yep. it, spam i can't even talk it's meme coin spam over and over and over again it's it's the same thing on all of these networks that when they get busy like that, just as you're describing, Aptos literally was. Mm -hmm. Up toss, I think, is what we read. It's yeah. a fork of pumped off fun. It's mm -hmm. just more meme coin garbage. Pardon me if you like meme coins. That's the popular thing right now. I'm learning about it. I don't mean to be a crypto elitist, but you meant, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's meme coin opportunities. Problem. <laughs> meme coin opportunities. Yes, we want to make meme coins a possibility, even on Divi side chains. There you go. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah, I'm saying that's that fine. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> but, but but like and have a whole you know side chain for that. All meme right. coins. You go. The won't meme affect, chain. That's right. Yeah, won't affect the Divi blockchain, it, uh, the main chain at all, and it won't affect all the other. Um, uh, utility on other side chains like that's absolutely right. you won't make fee surge you know, that's right you know, that's, let that it's meme a, it's coin side chain do what it does it's Line. a developer philosophy everything is modularized yeah everything yeah. everything can co interoperate but one thing yeah. doesn't necessarily affect the other thing yeah. and maybe that beautiful. meme coin side chain maybe 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 it gets used a lot and maybe you need of to make course. another one, and that's okay too. Like they won't don't, don't and they can talk to each other. And like it, it's such an amazing system, way better than what's out there right now. Um, make as right. many and meme coins right. as you want. And if you're if you love meme coins, this is the way to do it. Um, so that's that's uh, all right. That's that. Let's let's, let's talk about. We'll uh, have a million. We'll have yeah, a million. Let's talk about Durov. Sorry, the let's, Telegram let's talk more CEO. About, uh, Durov here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, got uh, our interesting. Friends. Yeah. It is. Yeah, um, so I think since we decided to talk about that story, it has evolved a few times because they came with several different um, explanation. But very clearly, um, it seems to be uh, some kind of, you know, coercion attempt to uh, have um, Telegram basically follow whatever France or EU wants them to do. Yeah, um, uh, it's interesting because they claim that they've been following everything uh, EU was asking. They've been doing whatever they requested. They comply yeah. with their regulations, but uh, it seems that uh, France is not. Uh, it's not agreeing with that. So I think so. Uh, the conspiratorial mind of uh, side of my mind here says uh, he said no to them on something because now what's important is that Telegram is not safe. Uh, to use all those groups you're in, most of the chatting you're doing are not private. And, and there's a it's meeting with, uh, yeah, there's a, right. uh, there's a, there was an interview he did with Tucker Carlson. If you watch it, you'll see, he fully admits right in. He says, you know, if a government needed to get to somebody, you know, I'll decide if, uh, if they can have access to the group or the, or the chat or the information or whatever. He said it right in that interview, like he and his group is deciding who can see what, um, and so it's not, there's not, it's not this conspiracy that, you know, that, uh, he is allowing certain governments or not. He has been without a doubt. He had, he admitted it. Yeah. It's possible that he said, no, it's possible that he's got possible. competing governments that are asking him to do different things. And he chose one and it wasn't France. The thing France is getting him on is again, this is, goes back to that, uh, uh, Silk Road, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and open sea thing is they're getting them on, on deploying cryptography. Like that, that's nuts to me. That right. is right. unbelievable. So, I mean, if you go in the that. conspiratorial path, yeah. um, yeah. so I think that, um, Telegram has been extremely, um, critical 
in the way um, Ukrainian and Russian see the Ukrainian Russian conflict, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and it, as you mentioned very well, it is not about encrypted data because you only have end-to-end -end encryption when you go in secret chat in Telegram. Yeah. Like all the it's other groups, no they're, not, they're yeah. not encrypted. But but Thank definitely you, they want some groups that probably shouldn't be closed to be closed. And uh, definitely Telegram could say, hey, we're complying. But then if they ask for more, and it's, it's like beyond the legal framework, you know, I think we've seen very well how it works with the uh, Twitter... Uh, situation with the you know Biden administration for years and all the Twitter files that have been uh, going out and um, I wouldn't be surprised that it's exactly what's happening and now they're trying to basically impress him right they're trying to bother him yeah. because he's not following I, I agree with you yeah. that's why um, it's important for groups and chats and so forth to go on to platforms where the people of the platform itself can't get to the information Apple demonstrated this with their iMessenger when the feds were trying to get at stuff. I don't, and we never really got an answer as to whether they did or did not get in there. Signal claims that they don't uh, have the ability to let people yeah. into your conversations. There's other ones, too, that we looked at. Um, but Telegram's not one of them. <laughs> Telegram, right. absolutely. Uh, it, you know, by their own admission, let's let's governments in or, you know, actors, whoever they are uh, to view things if they deem it useful, you know, right, wrong, whatever. Uh, you know, that was all up to Durov and his groups uh, and his group. We we even in this group have had private DMs where we started because we were sharing something that was securely those you have to manually create like if i was going to give you the password for some website i'm mm. not going to post that in an open group on telegram yeah. but i am going to create a specific conversation with you and you can do that with most of these apps right you can create a, a private conversation that's completely encrypted it just has to be enabled there's even conversations there's even platforms there's even forums that you can do that kind of thing in but most users aren't aware of enabling it they don't even mm. know it exists or they just assume that it's always protected it's always encrypted if i know because most of you know that i build uh, uh i work in python i build bots for both discord and telegram um if i know the channel id you can pull it up in a browser you can literally look at, at everyone's conversation. You can yeah. see all of that. It's just open text if you have the channel ID. So be careful what you're writing down. Even in private groups, that's not encrypted. If somebody shares right. a channel ID, there's a possibility that you can see all that data. It has to be encrypted. So no matter what you're using, whether it's Telegram or any other app, make sure that you know its powers, its limitations, and make sure you're careful or you think about what you're going to write <laughs> before you write it. Um, but we, because most we of what can we see share that in our, in our groups or in our public channels, it's not security. Or you've seen Neegs and I, when we used to do support quite a bit on Telegram, somebody would post something like, um, I don't know, something related to an account that they would have. We would delete it immediately <laughs> because yeah. they don't realize. Yeah. Who knows if it really gets deleted? Public. Exactly. Yeah. It's probably not. It's on some server somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. And I think one lesson that um, we need to take out of that, because I think we're not, um, we're not taking that into account enough, is that people are not that concerned with their privacy. And that's, yeah. that's definitely not a good thing. Yeah. Like, Until they get they, hurt. There needs to be a very strong effort to keep communicating about the need for privacy because I think one of the biggest wave of new sign up that Telegram had was when WhatsApp announced um, their new terms of service and then sure. they were extremely unclear with the way they were handling data and it made a lot of people uh, run away and start Jump, Telegram yeah. accounts and um, 
and those people went to Telegram thinking they were in a, in a safe environment, right? And, <laughs> um, and in fact, they weren't. Like most, probably 99.9999% of the activity on Telegram is in public groups. And, and people don't even it's think about it. public groups, right? exactly. So... And, and that in and of itself is a problem because most people assume that when I'm chatting with you, there's nobody else there unless I see them write something. No, people are watching. There's That's bots right, but watching. I think there's it also shows watching. that they're not that concerned because they just went to the next one and they didn't really look into sure. the detail. And if you look at truly uh, decentralized options, anonymous options, those kind of struggle to to find uh, people who come to them, right? Yeah, so in fact, more difficult. you can see that the move is often triggered by, you know, some hype, some marketing, some things that are not directly related to the fact that it's actually, you know, privacy enhanced or whatever. Well, um, some people have the use. opinion, well, I have nothing to hide. That's the, that's the response. I have nothing yeah. to hide. And they're very prideful about that. It's not about you have nothing to hide. It's what it's about the bad, bad guys are sniffing yes. on what you're saying and watching yeah. and then use your publicly displayed, yeah. publicly shared, accidental or otherwise information against you. It has nothing to do with yeah. your ethics, your morality or any of those kinds of things or you have nothing to hide. Yeah. It just yeah, yeah, puts you at severe You're a good risk. person. Yeah. But yeah. not everyone is. And yeah. not because I, they don't want to show what they hide, but because they yeah. want to prey on what you show, you know? Yeah, guys, guys, I got yeah. nothing to hide. Hey, I just won the lottery. I'm going to go get a coffee at, at, uh, at <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> like, just <laughs> that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> like, hey, you know, nothing to hide. Well, okay, I just put myself at a, at, you know, as a vector of attack. So I just... I had that conversation with my mom last night. She said the exact same thing. You know, I, you know, I don't do anything wrong. It's got nothing to do with doing wrong. It's what the other people who will do something wrong uh, will do or can do. It's, There's like many people the who are in the path of the private, message. It's the assumption that if you want to do something private, that you're wanting to hide something. Like you did something wrong. No. Yeah. It's called being secure. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Uh, tough there. But let's go back to Durov here. So um, we talked about, well, we could talk a little bit about some other apps. Like, I, again, it's been recommended not to use Telegram. I don't know why Telegram is so big in the crypto industry. That is so weird to me why it's not other, like at least Signal. Uh, but that's, it is the way it is. Um, but I mean, each, each app has their own uh, reputation, right? It's kind of a, it looks like there is, n there is no good one or <laughs> it's difficult to know. Right. But at the end of the day, yeah. I think people go where people are, you know, even if, even if there would be the best app that would be hundred percent secure and all that, unless people go there. That yeah. it is kind of irrelevant, and so I guess the question right is, now, why did they go to Telegram? I mean, WhatsApp was already big. I, mean, I agree, but it's still the biggest, no. though, right? Yeah, but they don't yeah. like people don't like WhatsApp because who 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 built WhatsApp? Yeah, I, I agree, but and then look, they go to Telegram there. because <laughs> Telegram the, has the encryption ranking. capabilities. Yeah. It's built by some guy who thumbs his nose at at uh, at Putin, right? It has, you know, there's some. Um, uh, anti-hero sort of mentality yeah. that you're appreciating about his attitude. Maybe I don't, I don't have any idea. You use, you use telegram because your friends are on telegram and they're not on WhatsApp. They're not yeah. on your other messengers. Now there's, now there's even skepticism, whether that origin story is even true. So that, that's funny. <laughs> exactly. It's all it's <laughs> marketing brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could, it could simply be the, the Russian answer to Facebook, uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's, anyway, uh, so currently the most used app like that is uh, still WhatsApp, right? Yep. The second one is WeChat and the yep. third one is Facebook Messenger. So you can see yeah. that privacy is not among the primary concerns. <laughs> that seems, seems pretty clear. Yeah. Man, I can't help tell you how many. I had to use WeChat once um, when I was outside of the country and, and I probably have it somewhere unfortunately on some machine it might even be on my windows machine which i'm probably rooted now because of that no i'm kidding um 
I can't tell you how much spam I got on WeChat. Really? It was just really? grotesque. I've never downloaded that. <laughs> yeah. uh, on the no, border thanks. scope, though, um, I think Giraffe's arrest kind of fits into um, a kind of clear um, strengthening or straightening of um, freedom in kind of everywhere, right? And of course, it shows a lot in the West because I think we we were pretty free, but we can see that more and more we see that uh, people that should not have issues are being kind of bullied into uh, uh, following the the right narrative. Complying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the idea here, because that's consistent with, uh, with with the open sea, with the with the Silk Road. If you make a platform where people can do bad things, then you're doing a bad thing, right? That's 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 the messaging here. That's right. Um, that's right. And so and I and, think... and bad thing can be totally uh, arbitrary. Oh, totally. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's always the terrorists and criminals and drug dealers, right? It's always, if you're yeah. providing, if you've got one drug dealer on your platform, then you're providing the bad thing. Um, and so, that's right. and we don't need um, to have a proof. Like no, if one drug right. dealer just, could use your platform, that's right. it's enough. That's right. <laughs> and so exactly. it doesn't matter if it's, if it, if it happens or not. And it also doesn't matter if that happens way more on fiat based platforms yeah, yeah. like the banking system. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, what, relevant. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What if <laughs> yeah. what if we just built a side chain that was paired with an instant messenger program and it was always encrypted? Yeah. Uh, well then I think the key part there was we built it. Like the key is to Make sure that well. I meant uh, we as a as a community, the great we, not yeah. you. I don't know how to build it. Nice doesn't know. How yeah, to build right. It. I'm sure yeah. You know <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it can't be a centralized person or group that does it. Um, and I think that's totally you know that's doable with side chains. Um, it's hundred percent side something chains, side chain can offer. It's it will face the same issues iOS, as others. It's though. doable with with Android though, and and it needs it needs users. Right, it it is, it's not it because matter. you have a great app yeah. um, that people will use it, and it's not because it's the most you know decentralized or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be a movement from people for like using that app all of a sudden, and yeah, it's absolutely. a lot. It's a lot so, harder. So like it's not Nostra, an easy market. Yeah, Nostra is a great example of this, right? So that it works. Maybe it's not perfect, but it, it works. <laughs> it's decentralized. <laughs> messaging essentially uh there are people who make front ends for it i use the one called damus um and so like it, damus could go get attacked and go away and nostra doesn't go away and so there's no like that that kind of works um as a model for how to kind of fight this but unfortunately uh you know nostra has a number of issues um and people aren't loving it um as right. much as i you know i would want them to hope so there, there's got to be some that. improvements yeah <laughs> and and you know yeah. in established businesses like that where it is also a free product i think it's important to take that into account right users are mm -hmm. not paying for that um, mm -hmm. it is very difficult to come and you know replace one of those big established brands um i think there will need to be not just um you know, the infrastructure that is better, like offering a more decentralized and uh, probably more private infrastructure, there needs to be some innovation that, mm -hmm. that comes and makes like, oh, that app is so good because you can do that, that you can't do on the other one. And right. now you can get those kind of adoption. Otherwise, yeah. it will be very difficult just yep. because it's cleaner. Unfortunately, people don't rarely yeah, value that. Right. And as you said, no one ca actually cares about privacy until it actually hurts them individually. Right. And so, exactly. you know, the move to Noster is, you know, it's nerds and it's people who are privacy conscious people. And that's kind of it. But, you know, there's the limitations are also a little off putting that you don't get to see everything. Um, but that kind of stuff is uh, I, maybe it's a work in progress. We'll, we'll, Let's you know. also close out this Telegram topic. It's a good topic mm -hmm. that we're on it. It's not necessarily crypto. But it is, we're talking about development and we're talking about side chains and we're talking about building apps for these side chains. It's important to note that there was no founding truth that Apple was banning Telegram, but I'm going to follow yeah, up right. with that. Yep, that didn't so happen. that is not true. <laughs> the other thing yep. was, is this, this image that was going around about disabling certain features in your app and not 
turning them on. That was sort of a troll post. And then influencers were resharing this post. Yeah. If you follow that thread all the way down for certain things and did all the things that that provable that was shown that that didn't come from telegram it was eventually if you go back it was a couple of years ago i think what it would do in your ios app is it would totally remove the app store from your phone you couldn't <laughs> even add anything to your phone you think you deleted the app store altogether it's this was sort of a a, a shill kind of situation now i used iris iris is a messenger program for Noster. What happened? Apple removed it from my store. So mm. that's gone. I can use it on my desktop. But even on my phone, it's disabled in a way. On my iPhone with Telegram, certain groups, now it's got to be adopted by Telegram, I'm sure, are not viewable from my iPhone, but they are viewable with the same account on my desktop. So that's why I was making the statement just a few moments ago. It depends upon which operating system you're building upon. If you're locked into an operating system and users have no way to sideload, I guess I, that's the best way to state it, apps onto your phone, you're locked to that ecosystem. It's centralized under the guise of protection, which we do know that iOS apps have had less malicious actors it's not that they don't they certainly do then in the android stores the android store has been wildly populated over the years with malicious apps and they're getting better at that but you can load things on your android phone um, outside of the store that was my digression the telegram thing that was messaged was not proved it's sort of a a, a, a scare tactic just yeah, yeah people, it was right? making you activate the screen feature, the, the screen activity, which I wouldn't recommend to activate anyway. But, you know, those exactly. messages are always like that. It's like uh, send to 10 people, you know, if you don't want this to happen. It was pretty much the same kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's talk about Polkadot a little bit. So we decided to kind of look into uh, their offering um, and see what are uh, their limitation, what they need to answer to those limitations, and uh, what can we do to improve that um, with the TV sidechains. So yeah, honestly, whenever you talk about Polkadot, I can't get past the, the marketing <laughs> leak that happened a while ago. That's the first thing I think about. And now they just kind of they had an update about you know Polkadot 2.0, which they've been talking about for like a year. Um, and there's some upgrades, but like we got to talk about like why do they why is there a 2.0 why does it even exist um and i think it's important right, so that maybe there's... go ahead maybe first of all let's talk about their model right yeah. um they're basically following the same kind of model as uh, cosmos is proposing so that's not um the same but that's similar uh they have basically um an sdk that they call substrate and any blockchain that is built with this uh, SDK can easily integrate to the Polkadot network. And so basically the Polkadot layer one is acting as a central um, interconnection layer between yeah. the, um, the parachains. And so they use the layer zero term, but basically yeah, it's very similar to Cosmos where this central, um, central blockchain is responsible for the interaction with um, with the side chains, or they call it Correct. parachain in that case. Yeah, yeah. So high level, um, they're they're similar in that respect. There are definitely details that are that are different, but some some of the bigger details, in my view, are, are about the intentional limitations about how many um, parachains you can have, um, and they're, they're weird to me. Very weird slot renting kind of methodology. Uh, when I looked into it. Um, I honestly, uh, without grants, I'm not like for me, I don't know why I would ever, um, develop there. <laughs> um, sure. uh, you know, unless you're getting paid for it, it just, it <laughs> see, it always seemed overly complicated. Um, and it had these, these sorts of limitations. Um, and, um, now they're fixing some of them. Um, so yay to 
improvement. Well, I, I think yeah. they're selling the same. It's a similar message, right? It's Cosmos. It's also a similar message that we've been speaking about. There's a lot of similar words that we would use mm -hmm. dealing with things where we're interoperable, those kinds of conversations. Right. So when you start looking at all of them, you really have to start separating them by their technical standing. Now, Cosmos is different than, than Polkadot. Uh, we spent a lot of time already talking about Cosmos, but with many of these ecosystems, it's sure we can interoperate, but you've got to come into my play yard. You've got to come into my world and do my things. And then by yeah. the way, something here also has to validate those things. And you got to go out through my doors when you want to go out through my doors. And so to me, that makes me a little bit uncomfortable to, to, to get all of that flexibility, to get all that interoperability means you got to come into my yard and you got to well, do I mean, it in my yard. That's the thing we're trying to fight with Divi side chains, uh, because that's, that's not, that's not a cosmos or, or polka dot thing. That's all blockchain. They're all silos, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, the, and, it, and it's the <laughs> same crowd strike issue, right? It, like again, absolutely. they, yeah. they are having everything going through the, what they call layer zero. So basically this uh, intermediary <laughs> yeah. layer between uh, the different parachain or sub chain of their network. And uh, very clearly this um, leads to some major limitations, right? So one of the limitations they have um, is the ability to be able to verify that is that basically they can't, you were mentioning that they can't deploy more um, parachain, right? Not right so now. So yeah. right now there is, and it's not a hard um, luck. However, mm -mm. the number of validators they have, which is currently at max based on uh, their projection, which is a thousand, only allow them to validate transaction for a hundred uh, parachains without seeing some um, decline in the performance of the blockchain, like you know, like Solana that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so basically facing those issues, um, they just announced or they just implemented this uh, Polkadot 2.0. And they're basically releasing very interesting tech, a few, a few different components. And they are all basically uh, directed at making sure they improve efficiency of how the current resource of the network are used. Because again, as they can't grow the network bigger than what they, they have now, they have to invent some prioritization in the way transactions are validated. Sure. Um, parallel, I think they are actually going back in a smart contract for um, yeah, some of their solution a, relies on that, which exactly. was actually something that they kind of rejected in the beginning, but yeah, so, they see so that me, they're that's, basically that's hitting a the, wall. That's the biggest news of the whole thing to me in the, is that, so they, they, they have this thing in the center they call the relay chain. That's the thing that communicates, allows one parachain to communicate to another parachain. And now they've created another network inside um, and they're, they're, uh, messaging on it is like you don't need a parachain to provide utility um, since there's only a limited number of slots for these parachains. Here is an, another way to get utility with our with our system, and that's smart contracts on the main on the in the middle chain. You know, that's like sticking Ethereum in the center of that. And to me, it's just it's absolutely <laughs> going backwards. Uh, like, oh, you know, our stuff didn't work, so we're gonna put smart contracts in here. I, I just to me. I, I don't even care what the rest of the uh, you know advancements were. Uh, now you've made no reason to have any you, to use the parachains at all because the smart contracts are in there. And as we've noted many, 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 many times, smart contracts are a centralizing aspect. And I just I think it's the wrong Correct. way to approach growth. Uh, they are trying to approach growth to say, okay, you can do this other stuff now, but that other stuff is the problem in all the other blockchains. And so. I think they just went the wrong way. This is this is the same response. We're talking about interchain connectivity, right? It's interoperable with other things, including smart contracts. You built something, it doesn't work. So then you start going back on some of the things you said before, some of the things you did before. 
as Divi is no longer a masternode coin, there were many masternode coins that came out in that 2016, 2017, 2018, 19 timeframe. What did they all do? They all converted to tokens, smart <laughs> contracts. Where are they all today? Except Dash. Dash still has them. Except and Dash. Dash did not, neither did Pivx, right? Yeah. Um, there are a few that did not, but man, I, I can't tell you how many coins there used to be that were Masternode coins. I don't think that they exist anymore. They're now either tokens or they're just dead. Yep. Yeah. You can't uh, just rely upon something that you said you didn't like and then go, well, this is too hard. Right. Let's go back to it again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Come up yeah. with a real solution. We see that they are definitely um, they are definitely stuck in their model. Um, I think this uh, 2.0 um, update that is 100% centered in kind of reshuffling sure. the resource so that they can actually uh, kind of appear to scale, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For us, it's very interesting because it really completely validates our model. Um, we don't have any of those issues with our model. There is no centralized layer that is supposed to validate things for the other chains. Other chains are completely independent. They can be connected to each other and they don't rely on a third party chain they to don't, be able exactly. to, to operate. And that is such a major um, crowd strike like limitation that um, for us, it seems pretty insane, but I think it is because we're biased, because we have this technology, we can start to imagine um, way different approach for the scalability of the system. And those, th those approach seems kind of laughable when we, when we look at it from yeah. where we it's are. Funny, it's funny you use the word bias. So like if it's Nike versus Adidas, like those are both sneakers, <laughs> there's not actually a fundamental difference between them. It's just a bias. Yeah. But what we're doing is like, I don't know, it's like uh, Boeing versus uh, Ford. I, like, I don't know, maybe Boeing is a bad, bad example. That's a little <laughs> extreme, but uh, I, I get what you know, you're trying uh, to do. Uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, Tesla versus, uh, you know, Henry Ford. Not even. It's like, Betamax versus buggy. DHS in this case, <laughs> like, I think is the best It's not example. a bias. It's fundamentally better just in, in the... In, in the concept, in the way it's going to be deployed, all the things, um, you know, with the one exception, here's the bias maybe, is that um, is Polkadot is out there uh, and this uh, and our side chains are not out there yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's where yeah. I, you can call it a bias. <laughs> <laughs> but so. you also use bias for other things than just arguments, right? It's when sure, you have a weight sure. that is stronger on one side than the other. It yeah, doesn't sure. have to be... Um, yeah. Not ju not justify. Eh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, no, I don't I mean, know. I, I, <laughs> we're, we're I guess there's an emotional so bias, and then there's... now we're talking yeah. about Rob's biases, our biases. Right. I think uh, not conflict. Confidence. I didn't say conflict. Right. Yeah. It's more like we right. yeah. uh, we have like we put more weight on that because we have the information that is actually yeah. feasible. Yeah. Can I just say? No, I have this? a bias that says everything you say is wrong. So that's uh, I have okay. a bias. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say this? If your foundation is built right. You can tear down what's on top of it and rebuild it back again, right? You can do mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. If your foundation is right and you have level one or whatever it is, you can build a level two if you want. You can build a level three if you want. You can remodel it if you want. That's mm -hmm. a key thing because I want a hot tub and maybe you want a sauna, you know, on your floor. I think that when we look at some of these chains, these interoperable chains, they go, oh, crud, this is wrong. Now we have to mm -hmm. throw this out. Mm-hmm. We have to rebuild all this and do something else, but it affects the whole entire blockchain. It affects your whole entire community Yeah. where if you build your foundation, right, right. That's the whole goal of Divi 4.0. And that doesn't mean that Divi itself won't have upgrades, but as you build things, as you have side chains, as you have utilities, you add, those are yours. What you do doesn't affect anyone else. It's as successful as you want to make it. If you decide that you don't want to do what you're doing anymore and your community doesn't want to do it anymore, that's totally up to you guys. It doesn't affect the native 
origin, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the founding foundation blockchain, where in these other cases and these other, we'll call them para styled chains, although not all of them, some are hubs and some are para. It seems to be whatever you do affects everything. There's some consensus issue that's rooted at a different level. That is what makes Divi different. Divi side chains want to make sure that the respect, the sovereignty of the user is maintained, the respect for the native chain is maintained, but also giving you all of the ability to build out your utility to maximize your opportunity. As things are upgraded and changed, yes, you may want to upgrade things. That can still be done. Your consensus, your all those things, those are all up to you. And some of those things need to be fully fleshed out before we really start talking about them. But your ecosystem can be your ecosystem. And I see so much, so much of this going on in these hubs and parachains that something somewhere else can have an unintended effect on whatever I'm building in this ecosystem, it's complicated. This is, you know, Rob, you and I were talking about this. I think Niggs, you were there too. It's just, it's just so complicated in what's going on in these other networks. Divi is trying to make crypto utility made easy. When you look at these other options, it's not a utility made easy situation. It is very complicated. And so this is more pure. It's more pure for the user. And it has a foundation that should be stable and secure. Even if upgrades occur, you can opt into them or not opt into them. Your ecosystem is holistically, it's modular unto itself. And so build as many rooms as you want. Add a sauna, add a hot tub, add a swimming pool, <laughs> whatever you want to do. I don't know. And that's right. And look, sidechain can like they will also hit limits, right? Exactly like those one chain for all network um, hit limits. We're not magician. We're not, we're not fixing that. However, with the ability to have multiple chains, have a new one if one gets you know, congested or you have new features, you have option to now have better fees. I mean, it, it is how with this um, horizontal scaling, I, I could say, um, that this basically doesn't have any limitation. Like it yeah. can yeah. scale forever. If, you get a, oh. if you're busy, incentivize people. Yeah. If you incentivize people right, they will join and they will help you. If, if it's somehow there's a gatekeeper because there's a limitation, you finally just say, forget it. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It should be as Satoshi described it. If blockchain is this, if blockchain is that, add more miners, add more people, add more this, add more that, add more nodes if you don't have the the peer-to-peer -peer relay communication. Incentivize people to do things and work and benefits everyone who participates. Mm -hmm. That's just general smart sense, I think. That's right. I think I think it's enough for that topic. Uh, I think yeah. so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I want to talk about the <laughs> uh, next episode. Um, so usually we post an episode every two weeks, but unfortunately we won't be able to post an episode um, in the next two weeks. So that would be in a month from now. Um, a few of us are moving. Uh, it's kind of complicated. So it will be a bit difficult for us to push a new episode in between. However, yeah. we already have an interview with Richard from Box Wallet, so we'll be posting that, and we'll try to Exciting. have another interview um, with Jeff. I don't know if it will be in time, but we'll try to do that um, in in that period too. I look forward to it. I can't wait to uh, finally listen to, although I did participate with it, um, the interview with <laughs> Richard. That'll be awesome. I'd like to rehear it. Oh, so that would be uh, an audio. That would be an audio interview uh, with oh, Richard. It's Unfortunately, it's going to be on Spaces too, right? Isn't that how you're going to uh, release it? I don't know. I mean, we could, but uh, we'll just push it probably as uh, in the same schedule as usual. Um, okay. You okay. would have I'd the same kind of format too. as the last videos that didn't have, um, where we didn't have the avatars because we had like a technical sure. issue. Sure. 
Well, give it to me. I'll release it into my spaces. I'll run a spaces with it. Sounds good. I'll do that. Cool. And then as usual, ask questions, like, subscribe, share. It's very important. Um, we don't have that many um, active members now. We didn't start the whole operation yet to start to reach beyond. So it, it really relies on you guys to yeah. share, share. Uh, ask questions share. if you have share. anything. We did Polkata today because we had uh, some questions. We did Cosmos. Uh, if you have another network that you want us to compare to, highlight where DV can actually solve uh, their problems, uh, we'll be very happy to go through that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you guys Thanks, later. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Yeah.